In my previous video on the basics of the MATLAB desktop, I introduced a number of basic functions of MATLAB using the graphical interfaces available on the MATLAB desktop. In this video, I'll show you how to do all of those functions using commands typed at the command window. First, I'll review some concepts and terms from the previous video. MATLAB's environment is the set of variables and files we're using during a MATLAB session. In the last video, we talked about using the graphical user interfaces on the desktop to control the MATLAB environment. For example, the current folder window could be used to add or remove folders or change the current working folder. The workspace window could be used to view or delete variables in the workspace. The command window is where we executed commands to perform math operations and assign variables. The results of these math operations are saved in a section of memory called the workspace. The command window is the most important window on the desktop. Anything you can do in any other window on the desktop can be done by executing commands in the command window. In this video, I'll introduce you to MATLAB commands which can be used to control the MATLAB environment. As we saw in our previous video, when MATLAB is first opened, you see what's called the desktop. The desktop has a variety of windows which help you control and manage the MATLAB environment. In this video, the only window we use is the command window. It's the big window in the lower center section of the desktop. The command window is where you type functions and expressions which MATLAB will execute. Most of the commands you'll have MATLAB execute will be mathematical expressions, but it can be convenient to control the environment with commands executed at the command window. I think it's more efficient to type a command than to perform the pointing and clicking with the mouse that the graphical user interfaces require. Commands executed in the command window are typed at the command prompt, which is a two greater than sign shown here. Now let's create a few variables in the workspace just as we did in our previous video. First, add 2 and 5 by typing 2 plus 5 at the command prompt. The result is 7 and is named A and S since we didn't specify a variable name. Now assign the value of 4 times 3 to the variable my variable by typing my variable an equal sign, which for us is the assignment operator, a 4, an asterisk, and a 3. The result is the number 12 and it is assigned to the name my variable. Now that we've got a couple of variables in the workspace, let's look at commands that we can use to check on the workspace contents and remove unwanted variables. The commands that I'll present here will do pretty much what we did using the workspace window on the desktop. We can check the variables in our workspace with the who command. Simply type the command who and press the enter key on the keyboard. The variables we currently have in the workspace, a and s and my variable, are listed in the command window. If we want to see additional information relative to our variables, we can type whos and press enter. Now we can see the variables, their data type, and their size. Notice that the who and the whos commands don't display the actual values of the variables. If we want to check the values of a variable, just type the variable name at the command prompt and press enter. For example, if we type my variable and press enter, we see the value 12. If you want to remove a variable from the workspace, the command is clear. For example, clear ans removes the variable ans from the workspace. Be careful with the clear command. The clear command by itself removes all variables from the workspace and you will have lost all of your work. If you want to intentionally remove all variables from the workspace, clear space all will have that effect. Now let's do some of the folder and file management that we previously used the current folder window to do. These commands can be particularly useful, so I'll summarize them here before doing a demonstration. PWD stands for Print Working Directory. It displays the name of MATLAB's current working folder in the command window. LS stands for List. It lists the files and folders that are in the current working folder. You can create or delete folders with the MKDIR and RMDIR commands. MKDIR stands for Make Directory and RMDIR stands for Remove Directory. CD stands for Change Directory. It's used to change MATLAB's current working directory. Finally, all of these commands can accept file or folder names as arguments. There are a couple of useful shortcuts available here. A period or dot is used as a shorthand for the current working folder. Dot dot is short for the parent folder of the current working folder. If we want to use the command window to see what the current working folder is, we can type pwd and press enter. 
PWD stands for Print Working Directory. The path to the current working folder is displayed. Directories and folders are identical. If we want to see the contents of the current folder, type ls, which stands for list. The contents of the current working folder will be displayed. Now, you'll always see folders listed as dot and dot dot. The dot folder is the current working folder, and the dot dot folder is the parent folder. To create a folder inside the current working folder, the command would be mkdir for make directory. mkdir space temp creates a directory named temp, as we can see by using the ls command. To remove a directory, use rmdir. So rmdir space temp removes the directory we just created. To double check this, use the ls command again. The cd command can be used to change the working folder. cd stands for change directory. To see how this works, let's recreate the temp folder in our current working directory by typing mkdir space temp. To make sure that the folder got created correctly, type ls. Next, let's make temp our current working folder. To do this, type cd, a space, and the folder name, temp. By default, the cd command looks for a folder in the current directory. If you want to switch to a folder in another directory, you can type the complete path of the desired folder after the cd command. Now let's go back to our previous current working folder. The easiest way to do this is to remember that dot dot is the parent folder of any folder. So, since our previous working folder was the parent folder of our current working folder, we can just type cd, a space, and dot dot. If we type pwd now, we see that we're back to our previous working folder. Just to keep things tidy, I'm going to get rid of the temp folder again by typing rmdir space temp. There are also commands to modify the way information is displayed in the command window. We can, for example, change the number of digits in numerical displays, change the amount of white space in the display, and suppress display of calculation results entirely. Please be aware that none of these changes affect the way MATLAB is representing the numbers internally. These are strictly cosmetic effects. The format command can be used to change the way numbers are displayed in the command window. The typical use of the format command is the word format followed by an argument. By default, MATLAB displays four decimal places for any real number. For example, if I create a variable called near underscore pi equals 22 divided by 7, the result will display four decimal places. We can change this by typing format long and pressing enter. Now if I display near underscore pi, the number is displayed with 14 decimal places. There are a variety of formatting options. To display numbers in exponential notation with four decimal places, type format short e. Now please be aware that the way the numbers are displayed does not affect how they're actually represented in the workspace. It's generally not really desirable to have MATLAB always display the results of a calculation. For example, a matrix calculation may result in hundreds or thousands of numbers being created. It's counterproductive to have all those numbers scroll past in the command window. It's really easy to keep MATLAB from displaying the results of a command. Just follow the command with a semicolon. If we create a variable, myVar2 equals 7 times 3, followed by a semicolon, MATLAB calculates a result for myVar2, but doesn't show you anything. If you want to see the value of myVar2, you can type the variable name, myVar2, at the command prompt and press enter. But regardless of whether you view the value or not, it's still in the workspace and you can still use it. We can also get access to MATLAB's help files directly from the command window. I'll introduce commands to open the help window, display help information for a particular command, and perform a search in the help files for a specific keyword. The command to display the help window is doc. This command opens the same help window that we saw when we used the question mark icon on the tool strip. If you want help on a specific command, simply follow the doc command with the name of the command. For example, doc space format opens a help window about the format command. It's likely that this window will give you more information about the format command than you would ever want. If you want to display the help information directly in the command window, you can use the help command. The syntax is help, a space, and the command about which you want help. Help space format 
displays information about the format command directly in the command window. This information won't be as visually appealing, or in general, as complete as the information displayed in the help window, but sometimes all you need or want is just the basics. Likewise, you can search for help on a particular command using the look for command. Just type look for, a space, and a string of text that you want to find in the help files. Look for integral, looks for commands relative to integrals, and displays the appropriate functions. You can then use the doc or help commands to explore the various commands that have been displayed. Finally, let's take a quick look at commands we can use to save data to disk from the workspace and load data from the disk to the workspace. There are a wide variety of commands relative to this topic. I'll introduce just a couple of them in this video. Later, after we've introduced arrays, we'll revisit this topic in depth. You can save the workspace as a native MATLAB file with the save command. Simply type the word save, a space, and the name of the file. For example, typing save example underscore file creates a file in the current working directory named example underscore file dot mat. We can likewise load native MATLAB data with the load command. First, I'll clear the workspace. Now, if I type load example underscore file, the variables in that file get loaded into the workspace. To wrap things up, let's summarize the commands that I presented in this video. We could use the who and the who s commands to view the contents of the workspace, and the clear command to remove variables from the workspace. We use the format command to change the way numbers are displayed in the command window, and a semicolon was used to suppress the display of results of a command to the screen. Help and doc will show help files for a specific command, while the look for command can perform a search for commands that are relative to a given topic. Finally, we talked about using save and load commands to import and export MATLAB data. After watching this video, you should have a pretty good idea how to use MATLAB's command window to create and remove folders, change the current folder, view commands you've executed previously, view the variables in your workspace, and access MATLAB's help.